I want to talk to you about another pre-trib rapture moment. Uh, we're going to talk today here about uh, two bodies or one. This is pre-trib rapture moment number six. And we're going to start out here in Revelation chapter 7. I'm going to show you that there are two bodies in the time of Jacob's trouble, not just one, like with the body of Christ. Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 8 says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and were there were sealed, and hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Is there any doubt about who these people are? No, these are the children of Israel, tribes of the children of Israel. And then it goes down through there. I'm not going to read all of it, but you can see the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand, tribe of Reuben, tribe of Gad, tribe of Aser, tribe of Nephthalim, tribe of Manasses, tribe of Simeon, tribe of Levi. Levitical priests, the tribe of Issachar, the tribe of Zebulun, and the tribe of Benjamin. Oh, and the tribe of uh, Joseph as well there. Didn't mean to skip that one. So you see the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. All right? Very important. But now look at Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. These are not Jews from the twelve tribes. All people, okay, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of, that, of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now a lot of people will try to tell you that these people here, this great multitude, is the body of Christ. These are Christians. No, they're not. First of all, John was a Christian. Now, if the angel says to him, Whence you know, came these? You know, who are these people? And John says, Sir, thou knowest, you know, what does that mean? That means John didn't know who they were. Now, wouldn't that be kind of strange? John being a, a Christian, and yet he doesn't know his own people? No, these are a different group. Okay, The body of Christ has gone up before this point in time. But let me show you something else here. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. Starting here, it says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we may be justified, we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Let me stop there for a minute. Okay? If you're a Christian right now, you are part of the body of Christ. You're not part of this body over here and that body over there and there, all the different bodies. There's one body. One body of Christ. You get up to heaven, there aren't going to be many Christs walking around. You say, oh, which, which one was I part of? No, one body. That's the church. Right now in the church age, there is one body, and that is the body of Christ. One living body of believers. Now look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 28 and 29 here. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Did you see 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes, and a great multitude? No. There's neither Jew nor Greek. That's how you know that the group that's described there in Revelation chapter 7, the two groups, there are two bodies, two distinct bodies. Jews are distinct, 
from Gentiles. That's not so right now. If you're a saved Jew, you're a Christian. If you're a saved Gentile, you're a Christian. Don't fall for this lie that there are different bodies. There's one body right now in the church age. Right now in the, in the dispensation that we are in. And you can pretend that the dispensations don't exist and go live in la-la land and stuff like that. I'm sorry. One body. Right now. Things change when the rapture happens. This is another proof of the rapture. You say, well, that's only one verse. Okay. Colossians chapter 3 verses 9 through 11 says, Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. That's the test for seeing if somebody's really truly saved. Are they a new creature now? You say, well, no, not really. Then they're lost. Okay? Don't tell me that God's Holy Spirit can come into the body of, of, of a man or a woman and nothing changes. I don't believe it. I don't believe that for one second. But continuing here, And I've put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, or circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Saved people, it's talking about. Not saying Christ is in everybody. The saved body of Christ, Christ is in them, and they are in Christ. One body. So, Christians today are one body. Do we have that clear? I certainly hope so. In the time of Jacob's trouble, there are two bodies. Jews, 144,000, and Gentiles. They're not the same. Things that are different are not the same. You say, why? Because they're spelled differently. Okay, class? You want a little gold star for getting your lesson right? This is elementary, people. Two bodies in the, in the time of Jacob's trouble. Jews and Gentiles, distinctly separate from each other. Two different bodies. One body right now. What happens? What changes? The rapture. The rapture of the body of Christ is going to happen before the Antichrist is revealed, before the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble is for Israel. It's not for the church. The church is gone for that time. And there will be many Gentiles, many people will get saved at that point in time because they're going to realize they weren't saved they were going to realize that their religious convictions that they had were just vanity. It, was, it meant nothing. Their denominational membership in a building someplace did not save them. Now some people are going to be so given over to, to error and lies that they're not going to be saved. They receive not the love of the truth now, and so God actually sends them the strong delusion, which is the Antichrist in that whole system. And they'll believe the lie and be damned. All right? There's a lot of people that are going to do it. But there's a lot of people... Two, there's a whole other group of people that are just going and they're doing their religion thing, trying to be good, and it's all of a sudden going to dawn on them, whoa, I wasn't really saved. The real, true, one body of Jesus Christ, those truly saved people, it's very, very, very small. Very small. Most people that say that they're Christians, the vast majority of them are lost and on their way to hell. Drive down through any town at all and you see those church buildings, they're filled with lost people. Religion has damned more people to hell than all drugs, drunkenness, whatever else, pornography, perversion, everything. That hasn't damned a, a one hundredth of the people to hell compared to religion. Organized religion damns people to hell. All right. So, one other point I want to make there. You say, I'm still not convinced. Well, if you notice in Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, it says that they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That's further proof that we're not dealing with Christians in the church age. Alright? You don't wash your robes right now as a Christian. You will have to in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be partly your own righteousness, not taking the mark of the beast, in other words. Faith and works. That's also going to be there. 
That's not here today. If you're a Christian, you are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not washing my robe in anything. All right? The robe is given to me as a symbol of righteousness. It comes from the Lord. The blood is applied to me. My sins are not imputed. The sins that I have committed in my life are put on Jesus Christ. He became sin who knew no sin. That we might be the righteousness of God in Him. You know, in Him? Are you in Jesus Christ? Are you saved? Do you know for sure that you are saved? You say, yes, brother, I am saved. I know for sure that I've put my faith in Jesus Christ and that His blood has washed away my sins. Then you're going up. You say, I don't believe that. Sorry, you're going. As much as you love this world, as much as you want to prove that you're righteous and that you can survive unto the end and endure to the end to be saved and all that stuff, Matthew 24, 13, as much as you want to prove that, I'm sorry, you're going up. All right? So this is just one more proof that the Bible, the King James Bible, teaches a pre-tribulation rapture. This group that is in that time of Jacob's trouble, Revelation chapter 7, that group, they are two bodies, distinct from one another, Jews, Gentiles. Right now, Jews and Gentiles are one body. Do not be deceived by the post-tribbers. That's it. That's it.